Hello, I'm Dennis O'Donnell, Vice President of Precision PCB Services Inc. And today we're going to demo the model ZMR 730A VGA Rear Station. This is a newer model that we have on the market, and it can place extremely small chips and extremely large chips. Uh, it can place down to 0.1 millimeter pitch, and the standard machine will place up to 90 millimeter chips. And we could have them customized to place up to 150 millimeter VGAs. And so today we're going to do a video with a uh, 55 millimeter VGA, and we're going to show you how to install it on the machine. The machine comes with uh, several features: as top hot, we call spot hot air, and you can get different size nozzles that are magnetically attached. And you also have a bottom spot air, hot air. And then you have these cobalt area heaters, and those are good if you're doing thick boards or dense boards and ships. They'll preheat the board prior to using the, the hot air exposure. Um, so this will do very thick boards, uh, six, eight millimeter boards, and very large chips. You can hold the boards inside the uh, racks here. And if you have an odd shaped board, they have a tooling that mounts to the side you can hold by the tuning holes or you can hold by the edge of the board. So there's several ways to hold the board. This board is nice and square. There's no components. So we can just mount it right in the rack. Tighten that up. So the machine has touch screen operation. Um, it has a high resolution split vision camera that has a 70 millimeter field of view. So it makes it excellent for viewing large chips. It has a robotic, robotic vision system that we can move around the perimeter of the BGA so we can observe the perimeter balls on all the BGAs at high zoom. And we'll show that as we get to the demo. So right now, I've got my chip up in the upper nest, my board's in place, and I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a uh, thermal couple close to the edge of the BGA. So for the installation, I'm going to monitor my board temp. There are five external thermocouple inputs. So you can monitor the larger boards. You can monitor your temp at the BGA. You can measure it on the bottom, at the edge, wherever you want to put your probes. And it'll give us an idea how evenly our board seating when we do these profiles. Okay, so we have our chip in the upper nest. And we've loaded our profile for LED-3. And so we feel is select like our sequence. This is mount. And we'll press start. Once it comes to underneath the BGA, we press confirm. If the BGA is in place. It's going to pick up the chip. And so now we have our split vision camera comes on. And what this is going to do is going to look at the PCB pads and the BGA balls and we'll line them up. We can adjust our lighting. The blue is for the solder balls. The gold is for the circuit board. What we're going to do, we're going to zoom in a bit. And we're going to go to the upper right corner and line up the balls, the pads on the upper right corner. Okay, so we're going to adjust the yellow light for the BGA pads and we'll adjust the blue light for the balls. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the solder balls set it on the pads here on the upper left hand corner. I want to observe my centering to the center of the screen and I'm just going to move across to the right and make sure that my chip rotation is not off. And you can rotate the chip clockwise or counterclockwise. It's pretty odd. You can just tag it a little bit, but that's pretty close. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the center of the chip. We're going to zoom in a little bit more and just make sure that our solder balls are centered in the pad. And just so you can get an idea of the range of uh, zoom on this, this is all the way out. 
This is our field of view. This is a 55 millimeter chip right here. And our field of view goes out to this yellow line. So it'll fit a 70 millimeter chip in the full field of view. But the nice thing about this is if I zoom in, I'll zoom all the way in. And I'll zoom out a little bit and let the autofocus kick in. So that's about our maximum zoom there. And we can see the balls are lining the pad. Now if we desire to, we can go all the way out to the edge of the chip. And we could view around the whole perimeter of the chip at high magnification with this robotic vision system. So it'll go around all four corners. So this is a 70 millimeter chip and we can, we can customize it to have movement up to 150 millimeter. This particular machine right here has movement up to 90 millimeter. So I'm just going to zoom, zoom out a little bit, confirm our centering. Now we're ready to place the chip. Okay, you can come back. Okay, so our chip is centered onto the pads. We made sure everything's um, square so we didn't have to rotate it. Now we're just going to press alignment to finish on the touch screen. And then it's going to place it. We'll turn on our light. We'll turn on a side view camera here. We confirm that our solder balls touched on the pad 100%. So with the side view camera, we can confirm component placement, and then when reflows, we can confirm that we have solder ball reflow. Again, the side view camera is the same. We can zoom in and zoom out. And right now, we can zoom a little bit close and we can watch the reflow. And so right now, we're running our profile, and we have the top heater, spot hot air again, bottom heater, spot hot air. And then we have the cobalt area heaters here. Uh, for this part, we really don't need them that much. But I'm going to run them anyway. And then I can go to my uh, pet settings. I'm just going to go to my curve analysis and I can watch as it heats up here on the touch screen. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're monitoring our temperatures. This top temperature is what my top heater is actually putting out right now. The bottom heater temperature is my bottom heater is putting out. And then the IR temperature is what the IR temperature is set to right now. It should be around 230 to 250. Right now we're only losing one, one external thermal couple. That's a 90. And normally uh, we're a little bit away from the chip. It'll come up about 235 to 250 as reflow temperature. And so we can just monitor our temperatures here as it goes up. And we can note visually when it reflows and then at what temperature setting it's reflowing at. Okay, so we're starting to see solder reflow. Slowly reflowing on the in the center and going out towards the sides. Bring our side view camera out a little bit. And just make sure that we flow around the corners. So right now I would consider the chip fully reflowed. So let's look at the temperatures that we have here. Our profile peak reflow temperature at the upper and lower heaters is set to 290. They both reach 290. Our thermal couple temperature at the edge of the BGA is 230. And that's typical. You're going to have around, depending on the density of the board, you're going to have the 230 to 250. Um, so this profile I would consider acceptable. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to knock off probably about 30 per seconds on the reflow. Um, and it should be good for this particular board and chip. Again, let's look at one more picture of the final screen. Machine. So at the end of the profile, um, the machine is going to reset and then it will go down into uh, automatic cooling mode. Okay, 